welcome back for the finale of our breakdown and analysis of the Tesla 1010 Wii Robot event. Let's get right back into it, with Musk introducing the latest Optimus robots to the crowd, seen for the first time after Musk wraps up the Robovan presentation. He trots out some fully mobile units that all have two digit numbers on their arm and between what would be their shoulder blades. We'll let Musk go through his entire Optimus presentation, then back it up and tear it down. Speaking of robots, So everything we've developed for our cars, the batteries, power electronics, uh, the advanced motors, gearboxes, the, the software, the, uh, the AI inference computer, it all actually applies to a humanoid robot. It's the same techniques, it's just a robot with arms and legs instead of a robot with, with wheels. And uh, we've made a lot of progress with uh, Optimus. And uh, as you can see, we, we started up with someone um, in a robot suit, uh, sort of down. And then we've progressed tr dramatically year after year. So if you extrapolate this, you're really gonna have something spectacular, something that anyone could own. Um, so you could have your own personal R2D2 C3PO. And I think at scale, the, the, you know, this would cost something like, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Probably less, less than a car is my prediction, long term. Now, it, you know, it'll take us a minute to get to the long term, but, um, but fundamentally at scale, uh, the Optimus robot, you should be able to, to buy an Optimus robot for, I think, probably twenty dollars to $30,000 long term. Going back to the beginning, first unit through the door is number 37. We'll point out different numbers as they present themselves to see if we can catch what the other units are doing throughout the evening. And as the bots move single file into the crowd, they are descended upon by a dozen or so handlers, identified by the black Tesla shirts with red lanyards. We move into a compilation of an Optimus with no arm number, retrieving the mail, watering houseplants, sorting toys, helping with kitchen cleanup, serving drinks, and as Musk says, he'll just be your friend. Your own personal bot buddy. Your R2-D2 C-3PO, he calls him. Which makes us wonder if he knows which droid is which. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. Musk's first statement after the video was this. I think everyone of the 8 billion people of Earth, I think everyone's going to want their Optimus buddy. Maybe two. This claim was repeated by Musk in a presentation to the Future Investment Initiative event in Riyadh at the end of October 2024, two weeks after the 1010 event. Remember how we said that Musk says shit without thinking it through? Let's do the thinking for him here. Musk thinks everyone on the planet will want one of these robots for their own private servant, buddy, or plaything at a cost of twenty to $30,000 per unit. Obviously, that is a total lowball number that he pulled out of thin air, but even with a price tag of 20k, his entire premise is ridiculous. Focusing on the population of the planet at 8 billion people, let's take the top 15 most populated countries in the world, which account for about 5.1 of those 8 billion people, and compare the cost of a $20,000 robot to the average annual wage of those countries. Now it comes as somewhat of a shock to people in the Western world how little people make in the other countries around the world, unless you've done some traveling in your life. Let's start at the top of the list with India. The average annual income, including returns on investments per resident, according to worlddata.info, is $2,540 US dollars per year. In China, number two on the list, $13,400. For Americans, it's $80,300 per year. And after the US, going down the list, the numbers range from $1,500 per year in Pakistan to $39,030 per year in Japan, with Japan being the only other country to rank higher than the $20,000 price tag for Optimus. So, long story short, the vast majority of people on Earth cannot possibly afford one of these robots. Just like the majority of people on the planet do not yet have a properly functioning toilet in their home. Now, regardless of whether or not people can afford five Optimus units per household, 
Musk has this belief that they're going to lead to an age of abundance. And then they'll be, they'll be producing products and services. I, I predict actually, provided we address risks of digital superintelligence, 80% uh, will, 80% prob probability of good, a good outcome. <laughs> Look on the bright side. Um, the cup is 80% full. Um, the, uh, the cost of products and services will decline dramatically, and basically anyone will be able to have any products and services they, they want. It will be an age of abundance, the likes of which people have not, almost no one has envisioned. It will be something special. We're going to address that fantastical claim in a memorable way at the end of the episode. But for now, we'll get back to the presentation while we contemplate how an economy where people don't have jobs anymore could possibly produce an unlimited product cornucopia. Now, one of the things we wanted to show tonight was that Optimus is not a canned video. It's not walled off. The Optimus robots will walk among you. Please, please be nice to the Optimus robots. So you'll be able to walk right up to them and um, they'll serve drinks at the bar. I mean, that's just, it's, it's a wild experience just to have humanoid robots and it, it's, they're there, they're just in front of you. This is all he says about the robots before opening the festivities with this declaration. Let's party. So for the rest of the video, let's say constant shuffle between different cameras and drones, showing people interacting with the new products. Let's tell you what we picked up from this hour long montage. First, the only thing you're going to hear the entire time if you watch it yourself is train wreck, techno music mixes, or dead air. You can't hear anybody interacting with or commenting on what they saw. Between all the Optimus units on site, there were only four tasks assigned and shown on the video and only one group of them were mobile when they walked through the crowd. The other three groups were stationary. We have the greeter bot, who is handing out gift bags. The bartender bot, who spends more time waving at the crowd than serving drinks on tap. And the go-go dancers in the disco cage. And these are the only station of units where we can see their feet. More importantly, we can see that their feet do not move and the bartender and greeter unit's feet don't seem to move either, as all of the units doing a specific task are stationary. For the greeter bot, the task being performed is essentially what the bots have been shown doing before in demo videos when they're sorting out batteries. And just as in those videos, the suspicion is that they're being controlled remotely by a human operator using haptic equipment. The action is simple. Grab a goodie bag, give it to the human, and repeat. The greeter also spends some time waving at the crowd, but this again would be an action of the operator, not an indication of autonomy. The server bot, number 16, is again performing a repetitive task from a stationary position. And again, it's obviously being remotely controlled by a human. To the operator's credit, they don't seem to have dropped a drink during this exhibition, but they didn't serve that many either. Checking the number of glasses at this station. They started with 22 the first time he's seen, and the last time he's seen, he still had 12. We only actually see him pour about three drinks. The go-go dancers, as stated before, are the only bots where we can see that their feet definitely do not move as they dance and gyrate to the music out of time. The techno rhythm pumps along at about 124 beats per minute, and the bots are bobbing and weaving at about 82. So they aren't being activated by the music. You may have noticed they are all doing the exact same thing in unison. So what you're watching here is a pre-programmed performance, not a live spontaneous action, with all units slaved to the same controls. And they appear to have a very short duty cycle before having to take a break. In fact, one of the things that we caught was that the go-go dancers actually had a malfunction. Right here, at the end of this cycle, all the bots drop their arms to their side. But this bot seems to get jammed up. And as soon as that happened, blinds on the windows of the gazebo dropped to hide them. The next time we saw the blinds reopen was over 10 minutes later. What you're watching here is essentially no different than the animatronic displays at Disneyland or Knott's Berry Farm. The first human-like animatronic was unveiled in 1964 at the New York World's Fair. And that, of course, was the famous Abraham Lincoln unit. It was later moved to Disneyland in 1965 and has continued to operate up until present day. 
currently located in the Main Street Opera House at California's Disneyland and receiving a $5 million upgrade and refurbishment. Having stationary automatons dancing to the music might have impressed kids, but only if they have never seen the dancing robot that Honda made named Asimo, introduced by Honda on Halloween 2000. Asimo, advanced step in innovative mobility, was the first humanoid robot to demonstrate human-like mobility and was inducted into the Carnegie Mellon Robot Hall of Fame over two decades ago. Asimo could also walk through the crowd, interact with people, even serve up a nice soccer pass to President Obama in 2014. The mobility and stability of the Asimo unit remains beyond what it appears Optimus is capable of doing. Hop on one foot, it could run and climb stairs. All of these things we have not seen Optimus accomplish. For the remaining hour of the video, it is a rotating montage of different camera angles covering different activities on the Warner backlot. So we're going to go through it rapid fire and we'll point out some of the things that we found interesting before we wrap up the night with a grand finale that you definitely have not seen anywhere else. All of these bullet points are going to be in order of appearance with timestamps in the lower left starting from T plus zero right here when the GoGo -Go gazebo lights up for the first time, just in case you want to check them out for yourself. Before we get too far into it, let's just say that the event was plagued with power issues starting from very early on. At two minutes in, the GoGo -Go dancers and music abruptly shut down, which was a technical difficulty that required the video feed to bring up the opening sequence kaleidoscope on the feed until it got sorted out over a minute later. At T plus 420, they had another power issue, causing the entire display area to go dark for a short spell. And at T plus 520, we see the server bot with neither his light table nor his area lit up yet. A minute later, the bartender had the overhead lights, but the table was still not working. At T plus eight minutes, another blackout while looking at roaming unit number 40, the second number we've identified other than the original 37 from their entrance march. At T plus 820, the crane or drone flying the camera overhead showed us that the only people allowed near the robovan are the Tesla monitors. Everyone else was kept outside the stanchions and there were no test drives in that vehicle. T plus 840, back to the server bot who has yet to serve a single drink or get his table lit up. We're now almost nine minutes into the event. At T plus 845, you can see how the robo taxi doors swing out as far as possible into traffic on one side and the sidewalk on the other. At T plus 10 minutes, another power outage of the entire area and the go go bots, which does not get fixed right away. At T plus 1120, we get a close up of a Model 3 driving by with no passengers in it at all. And we noticed throughout the night, the Model 3s just drove around empty most of the night, which is weird considering the number of people who seem to be lined up for rides. At T plus 12 minutes, we get a nice overview of the entire area, followed by the first time we see the greeter bot waving and handing out gift bags. T plus 13 minutes, we see unit number 36, who was good for one round of rock, paper, scissors. Something we noticed here that the handler on the bot's left shoulder had to step in to prevent a lady from getting hit by the bot while the robot drew an air heart because it looked like the robot had no clue she was there. We also noticed that the bot had a whisperer. The fellow with the beard on the right is talking to the robot or the robot's operator, but of course we can't hear the instructions. A minute later, the same bot had no idea there was a man in front of him wanting to bump fists. At T plus 16 minutes, the greeter bot has the first gift bag tray swapped out. It took him that long to give away 12 gift bags. At T plus 1640, there is a quick accidental shot of the WB water tower that all Animaniacs fans instantly recognize. T plus 17 minutes, still nobody getting a good look at the Robovan from inside the stanchions. T plus 18 minutes, first look at unit 41, making it the fourth free roaming Optimus along with 36, 37, and 40. At T plus 19 minutes is the fifth Optimus, number 38, with a crowd mulling around him, but not doing much. And so far, it looks as if the Optimus units are again parked in place. At no point in the video do we see them walking through the crowd. At T plus 21 minutes, we start following more empty cars around the track, and we're noticing some of the Easter eggs that were left around the set for people to spot like the Mega Jewels jewelry store being passed by this vacant Model 3. 
at T plus 2130, the sixth Optimus, number 43, and his whisperer is the guy in the ball cap. The taller guy behind the unit is making sure that this robot, who is not moving around, doesn't fall over backwards. And that simple action would lead us to believe that the go-go dancer's feet are not moving because they are bolted to the floor of the gazebo, which could be how they were receiving control signals and power. At T plus 22 minutes, more Easter eggs in the window. What looks to be a Twitter branding for X kilowatt and a movie poster for Robo Taxi Driver, ripping off the poster for De Niro's Taxi Driver, and next to that, the Optimus Outfitter store. Musk also ripped off some other movie artwork posted outside the hotel lobby that we noticed from the anime film My Neighbor Totoro. At T plus 2230, that's where we caught the serial number 16 on the server bot, just visible through his shirt, who is just now at 2230, serving the first drink of the night. At T plus 2320, the marquee of the theater, visible for the first time, posting the future is autonomous. In this shot, we can see how the bot booths are set up as framed in cubes with rope lights, presumably one each for the greeter bot in the foreground and probably the bartender bot in the booth behind the crowd. This will also be the last time that we see the greeter bot on camera after only 12 minutes of on-screen activity. At T plus 25 is where we notice the first error in the go-go dancers. After a very short routine of under 30 seconds from the time they all lit up to the time they went limp and the back bot froze. At T plus 2530, several totally empty Model 3s pass by and we get a good shot of the Warner Theater facade and Optimus Outfitters. Seems that nobody in that lineup was interested in riding in a Model 3. T plus 2615, the go-go dancers are still dark. And at T plus 2645, we see the Easter egg storefront next door to Mega Jewels called Body Works Hardware. At T plus 27 minutes, we see the map of the event area for the first time, something we also found on the at TechAU Twitter account, which can also be compared to the Warner Brothers Backlot Tour map, showing that they used roughly this area here. At T plus 2745, another power outage in the load up area, which should have been lit up like this. At T plus 28 minutes, for those people who already lost interest in the main show and don't know how to swing a hammer, they lined up to bash on a Cybertruck. See if you can spot the guy who has never swung a sledge before in his life. At T plus 29 minutes, a drone follows a robo taxi up the street until it hits rush hour, with half a dozen units backlogged at the pickup point around the corner. It probably didn't help that it takes so long to get into and out of the robo taxi, especially with those funky doors. At T plus 3030, another empty M3 drives in front of the sexy saloon, spotted for the first time. At the 31 minute mark, we thought this was weird. Our robo taxi pulls up to the Tank Palace Chinese food storefront. And while the passengers were unloading with the goofy doors up in the air, a Tesla monitor had to come out into the roadway and instructed the traffic to stop just before the shot cut away. Why would a fully aware autonomous car need a human to tell it to not proceed? As we reviewed this footage over and over again, we began to recognize the buildings and layout a little bit better. And we noticed that this storefront for the vinyl and DVD store was changed from the promo pic for the Robovan when it was parked in front of that same building, but it was called Stark Records. Maybe Musk figured he was already pushing his luck with the plagiarism bit and really didn't want to incur the wrath of Disney. At T plus 3130, an empty robo taxi pulls up and opens the doors for nobody and for no reason. At T plus 3430 with half an hour left in the video, this will be the last time that we see the bar serving robot, only 12 minutes after it poured the first drink of the night. At T plus 36 minutes, the go-go dancers are finally back in action after over 10 minutes downtime and their dance routine only lasted 90 seconds. At T plus 3830, another Optimus unit with his handlers. This one is number 34, and that makes seven. The final tally of individual units seen, and he's giving dancing a try. At T plus 3945, the same go-go dancer unit jams up in the gazebo display after two dance cycles, and the failures are starting to add up. At 4130, there's now two of the five units not slaved properly. Rear left and four right of the central bot are no longer following the group instruction. At T plus 4030, fans of the Abbott Elementary TV show will recognize the school bus in front of the Juno Deli, helping to block off the end of that street. 
At T plus 42 minutes, we have our first view down this roadway and see what's parked there on the left? That is a spinner from the original Blade Runner. Wonder if the producers from that show know that it was part of this Musk presentation. For everybody who was already bored and weren't already filtering out, it was time to break out the arcade games. Foosball, basketball, skee-ball, pinball, and even Pac-Man. At T plus 43 minutes, another MTM3 passing by the newly spotted general store. But we see something else here that will be important later, this conduit channel on the ground. At T plus 4645, a DJ we can't hear is rocking to his own beat from the fire escape, while a street musician is setting up his keyboards down below, but we won't hear him either, nor the sax player he teams up with. From the stoppages in the Go-Go Hut at 4745, and then again at 4830, the Go-Go dancers seem to have been reduced to a 45 second duty cycle. At the 49 minute mark, for the first time, we spotted a trio of Tesla ATVs. Well, to be more specific, the Tesla branded ATVs that are put out by Radio Flyer, whose website directs you back to the Tesla website where these units are not available for sale. Perhaps because in October of 2022, the original model units were all recalled for violating federal safety standards and were all ordered to be disabled. And near the 50 minute mark, as people are filing out, we see the final item of interest, namely the Michael Keaton, Tim Burton Batmobile parked right in front of the CyberScoop Creamery. And with this overview shot showing the power problems persisting in the load up area, that will wind down the montage presentation. Now there have been a lot of channels on YouTube that covered the event, but not all of them have the audience that we do and a member of our skeptic community happened to have some first-hand experience with this event that we're going to share with you, as he shared with us, in our comments section just after the event. This is the comment that Rob Vale one left on the page. I've got a bungalow production office on the Warner lot. Tesla spent over two months mapping the two squarish blocks using Google Map-like vehicles, mapping every square inch and fake phone pole, fire hydrant, etc. And during testing, even an unexpected non-actor walking by would cause an emergency stop or a golf cart driving around, the way people, executives, and crew get around a backlot, except the big production trucks, trailers, and picture cars. To be fair, when Google and Waymo demoed their more realistic autonomous cars, they mapped the area basically the same way. It just didn't take nearly as long and they could adjust due to their superior tech for vehicles or people driving by the edge of the area that was rented for the demo. Musk should have, but couldn't, due to productions having already been booked, even though this was announced like six months ago, rented and locked down the entire area as a hot set and covering the end of the streets so fake autonomous cars wouldn't get more confused when things drove by. Again, including people and also keeping crew, staff, etc. out of the area as it was used as a shortcut when walking around the lot. Common practice, just look for the rotating red lights, big signs, production assets, and the daily sheet sent to every office, including ours, telling us which exterior sets were going to be used that day and for what. So if it was a TV show, you could still walk through, bike, or even golf cart through, but might have to wait a minute or two if they are in the middle of a scene. Then when they call cut, you scoot through as it takes them a few minutes to reset the background, extras, etc. Oh, here's a point. Tessa also had to replace all the streets, which must have cost a fortune since they had to be returned from the newly paved look to a worn regular street, but very level for the dollies and cranes to use. Tesla had to put in so much effort to literally show nothing but good LED Silicon Valley vaporware. While my office staff could see the prep going into this, they couldn't get access to the closed set until the day after, and they were shocked to see the thick cable bundle that went to each robot thinking that they just needed AC power, which is virtually available everywhere on a studio lot, interior or exterior. So I guess the robots have no onboard power or can be controlled via remote control. Musk should watch the damn Boston Dynamics video or their humanoid robot. It was both eerie and funny that the robots had the stupid cowboy hat and scarf like Musk has appropriated from Texas. And that bartender reminded me and my gang of Yul Brenner's character in Westworld. Again, my two bits, four bits. Sorry, no picks, at least not from us. That's a big rule breaker, damn it. Thanks for your great work, as always. Just wanted to give back a tiny bit. Wish we had taken a couple of damn picks though, but not at risk of losing our bungalow. 
That wraps up one of the best thank you notes that we've ever received on this channel to date. Time to sum things up for this event, but honestly, it's hard to take this product reveal seriously. The new products Musk unveiled don't appear to be viable alternatives to either existing Tesla models or vehicles made by other personal or mass transit OEMs. Let's call the presentation what it actually was, a poorly executed theatrical production, right down to the fake storefronts scattered around a small portion of the Warner Brothers backlot. A 30K economy box two-seat pod on wheels that is completely unsuitable for families and a short bus that's less efficient than any other bus on the road don't really scream groundbreaking achievement nor paradigm shifting tech. Musk tried to convince fans and shareholders that Tesla has the best humanoid robot on the market, but they don't. There is no comparison to what we saw in this presentation versus the promotional video put out by Boston Dynamics on October 30th for their Atlas bot. The best and most telling thing about that video is that there is absolutely no chance a human operator in haptic equipment is making it move like this. The degrees of rotation at every major joint on Atlas far exceed anything a human could teach it through mimicry or operate in real time. Musk also used 1010 to try to convince shareholders that Tesla has the best autonomous tech, but they don't. Tesla would not have the best autonomous cars on the road even if there were no functional competitors in the marketplace because they are not on the road. And no matter how many Big Macs and Poodle McNuggets Elon Musk scarfs down on Trump Force One, it's not going to change the fact that his FSD is not working properly, his cars are killing people on a daily basis, causing investigations to be opened, and regulations on autonomy are not going to change overnight just because Muskie got a new bestie. And finally, Musk tried to convince investors his robovan was a surprise solution to mass transit which it is not. Electric buses are not new, and the floor plan of the Robovan is horribly unsafe and inefficient. This whole presentation was very reminiscent of the Zip2 scam that Musk ran on investors, where he built a fake case around the Zip2 computer to make it seem more impressive to investors. Or Musk's original X.com, a banking app described by a company software engineer named Scott Anderson as a Hollywood movie set of a company that barely got past the VCs, including Mike Moritz of Sequoia Capital. Or, as we said at the outset, a similar level of showmanship as the Solar City roof tile fraud from eight years prior on a different entertainment company's backlot that is literally two miles down the road at the end of Barham Boulevard. After watching this new embarrassment, one of the final questions you have to ask yourself is if this is what they came up with given two extra months from the original 8.8 unveiling, what the hell did they plan on presenting in August? Now, as for the claim that Musk made earlier that we glossed over about Optimus robots leading humans into an age of abundance, here's where we're going to readdress that claim. An economy fueled by tech that creates a world of abundance for all the humans on the planet is pure fantasy. If you have no people working because robots are taking their jobs, then people will have no paycheck at the end of the month to spend. There's no more basis in reality to that claim than there is to Musk's claim of colonizing Mars in the next three decades, which he's pushing again because SpaceX needs another infusion of cash via funding round to keep the doors open for literally the 38th time. All of this is beyond puffery. It is sheer delusional thinking. We're not citizens of the United Federation of Planets with replicator technology that can literally take our shit and trash and transform it into our next dry good or meal. It doesn't quite taste like the real thing, does it? It's made of our shit, you know. That's the base material that we use in our replicators. It's pretty good for shit. And you'll notice that even with their every need taken care of in Star Trek, every crew member still had a job to do in their utopian paramilitary structure. Going back to what we said earlier about Musk getting most of his revolutionary paradigm shifting ideas from sci-fi movies and using the very specific examples of iRobot for AI, the Matrix for his brain chip vaporware, and Total Recall for his Mars colonization fantasies, it occurred to us that we've seen another movie where robots do all the work for humans who have no responsibilities at all. 
What we've done is prepared an after credit YouTube short that compares declarations Musk made here of a world of abundance against footage from that film, making it very easy to share with anyone who is betting on Musk's automated future of abundance coming true. We're sure you're going to get a kick out of it because it was a lot of fun to put together. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Common Sense Skeptic, and make sure you add in the comments anything you think we missed or needed to expand on further. The more feedback on this, the better. From our end, we've got a big renovation project in the works, so we're not sure when the next episode will be coming out, but there are a lot of interesting events on the calendar coming up that we will probably discuss on social media. Also, we've got an amazing idea for a year-end wrap-up. If you would like to support our productions, or frankly our renovation directly, we have links to our Patreon, GoFundMe, and Buy Me a Coffee in the video description. All donations very much appreciated, and they will be put towards new studio gear for 2025. You can also support the channel by making sure you're subscribed, giving this video a thumbs up, sharing the episode with your friends, and ringing that notification bell so that you'll know when the Common Sense Skeptic returns. As promised now, click here for our bonus short.